In the last 35 years since I graduated in 1988, 10,000 banks in the USA have either failed or had to be combined with stronger balance sheet banks to work out bad loan portfolios. That's 10,000 banks in the USA that have disappeared in 35 years. What do you think the trend is? The math is on your side. Own the hardest asset ever introduced to mankind called Bitcoin. Because if you measure Bitcoin in a debasing fiat currency, it's going higher. I'm very bullish and I don't believe the FUD actually reflective of the true risk. The only thing I'm 100% certain of is fiat debasement. Everything that I do in life is about mathematics and probabilities, expected value. You said uh, billions of dollars of bonds. That's a flattering uh, intro, but here's the truth. A good day, I would trade a billion. Okay, like on one day, I would do that. Not that I traded billions of dollars of treasuries. That's easy to trade a, trade a billion dollar of treasuries. But trading a billion dollars of some esoteric credit instruments that's more difficult and you got to be right in the in the uh meat and potatoes of the uh of the financial markets to do that i didn't do it on a regular basis but i could certainly think about four or five days in my career that i traded over a billion dollars of esoteric credit instruments you need to understand people there is no certainty in financial markets except again mathematics will prove that fiat debasement is 100 percent certain and you can't argue with math Okay, math is the base layer of language because if you measure Bitcoin in a debasing fiat currency, it's going higher because the unit of account is going lower. You're not making money on your house, okay? Absolutely not making money on the value of your house. Value of a roof over your head has never changed. One iota. What has changed is the unit of account that measures the value of that account, uh, that house, okay? Understand math, mathematics, not FUD, not BlackRock's gonna attack the hardest asset. Why would BlackRock attack the hardest asset? To destroy any value that accretes for itself? Think about the probabilities. Yes, it's not a zero probability, but it is not an attack vector that is planned. I need people to play probability analysis. Understand that it's a distribution of outcomes where you have tail risks on both ends. You're supposed to play the most likely outcomes, not these tail risks. You can hedge against the tail risks, but don't go to the newspaper and say, I'm 100% certain about this tail risk that has, I don't know, less than 2% cumulative probability. You guys don't get it, okay? You just don't know how to manage risk. So have fun being a slave to the Fiat Ponzi. In 1988, when I graduated from school in an upstate New York, Ivy League school called Cornell. There were 15,000 banks in the United States. One, 5,000, okay? Now contrast that with the attic of the United States, which is my country, Canada. We're a long, thin ribbon. We only have six banks. They span the country coast to coast, but due to different regulations in the two countries, like interstate banking rules and community banks and whatnot in the USA, there were 15,000 in the USA versus only six in Canada. Damn, that's a pretty big structural difference, right? Between the two countries. Which is to say though, today in the United States, there's about 5,000. Which is to say, in the last 35 years since I graduated in 1988, 10,000 banks in the USA have either failed or had to be combined with stronger balance sheet banks to work out bad loan portfolios. That's 10,000 banks in the USA that have disappeared. I'm anticipating that the US will settle out with a banking system somewhere, dare I say, below 500, but above 100 USA yeah. banks, which means they're gonna get a lot up bigger there's going to be a lot more concentration of risk in the u.s banking system and most importantly there will be a an implied and this is where it's key too big to fail banking systems in both of our country are already too big to fail any one of the eight national banks in canada are too big to fail the government has an implied backstop on any one of them because the contagion to the remaining yeah. seven banks would be so severe that it would cause the rest of the banks to fail if the bank if the 
government didn't backstop the banking system. How do they backstop it, Sean? With the ability to print money. So banks, which are levered 25 times to their equity capital base, that's the leverage of a common bank, which is to say their risk absorbing capital is four cents on every dollar that they lend. That means they lever their risk absorbing capital or equity 25 turns. See, that's how you create money is through the banking system. So the banking system is the fiat Ponzi transfer mechanism, which is to say banks in the United States will continue to consolidate or fail or get what's called a take under. And in um, USA in the last two months, there was a amalgamation of two California banks, PacWest and Bank of California, where Bank of California took over, in air quotes, took over PacWest at a price that was under the trading value on the open market of PacWest stock. See, they had to do that and PacWest had to accept the take under, not take over, take under to combine two week balance sheets into something that was more robust by eliminating duplicity in the system of banks. Get rid of all the back office of one bank, you can increase the profitability margin, etc. But now you have two zombie banks banks merged into one that eventually will be acquired by another bank because it still won't survive.